What's up, good people? Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. I hope everybody is having a great um, Taco Tuesday. Hope all your taco dreams came true. Hope you're having a great day. Tomorrow, the Dallas Cowboys get back on the field, uh, along with the other for uh, 13 playoff teams getting ready for playoffs as we get ready to take on the Green Bay Packers. You know, um, I multitask a lot. Um, I was working in my workshop because I want to have um, plenty of prizes and things that I want to give away to you guys. And some of you guys have ordered some prints and things. Um, and I'm just trying to get this stuff done before I go back down to the Red Brick House and have them ready for this weekend because I want to thank everybody. We don't know how many games we will have left. The maximum would be four. We can hope that the Cowboys have four, but we'll have to wait and see. But I started talking and it hit me today because a lot of times i'm working and the thing with me is a lot of people will say or, or my rest in peace uh, my good friend alex used to say mark uh, he, he called me ff for fuck up fixer excuse my language um because he would always say if it's effed up mark will figure out a way to fix it and usually i'm kind of analytical and i come around you know eventually ideas pop in my head and i realized today while i was doing that live stream and working on this stuff why i think it is that dak prescott never gets any credit and it's because i my, my wife made me this wonderful shirt you see this uh, you know, them boys rule the East. Love it. She was up late last night making this thing for me, and I appreciate it so much. And I was working in the workshop, and I got it caught in the sander, and I tore a hole in it. And um, didn't hurt myself or anything. I was taking, changing the sanding belt and stuff on it. And when the, I put the cover back on it, it kind of pinched on my shirt. And I pulled away and tore it up the shirt. And there we have it. And I was saying that, what I was saying is, it's usually the cover-up that is bigger than the crime. You know, it's one of those things that people actually appreciate when you tell them the truth. Hey, I screwed up. I was wrong. And you move on. But when you cover it up, it ends up becoming worse. And it hit me because the thing with Dak Prescott is, is everybody who has forever denigrated or defecated on anything that Dak Prescott does... They can't admit that they were wrong. Because, you know, now you hear Dan Orlovsky saying things like, oh, well, Dak Prescott has never played like this before. You know, he's playing unbelievable. You know, but shout out to the world is yours. Let me show you guys something. Because uh, you would think that, you know, this was just, it just happened that Dak Prescott just happened to have a great season, that he's never done this before. Because what they'll try and tell you is he's just been a bad quarterback because of the interceptions last year. And even with the interceptions, the Cowboys, when he, the games he played they were high scoring offensive football but take a look up here now, don't take my words for it Dak Prescott 2021 okay 11 and 5 11 and 5 he didn't play in one of the games 6 and 0 in the division on the division 68.8% completion percentage 4,449 yards 37 TDs and mind you mind you that was tied with Aaron Rodgers and Pat Mahomes for touchdown passes on the season. Aaron Rodgers took home the MVP. Now, he did have less interceptions than Dak Prescott. Dak had 10. I think Aaron Rodgers had four. But 37 TDs, 6.2 TD percentage. And everybody's like, oh, man, he's playing great now. You know, we've never seen this before. That, that, that was 2021. 2023, 12 and 5. Five and one in the division, slightly higher completion percentage, sixty nine point five, few more yards, forty five sixteen. Mind you, he has had forty nine oh two, one short of the Dallas Cowboys record held by Tony Romo. Um, thirty six TDs this year, uh, mind you, the thirty seven broke the Cowboys record that Tony Romo owned in a single season. But 6.1 TD percentage and nine interceptions. So saying that Dak Prescott, you know, trying to put it out there in your mind because we have such a short memory span is bullshit. But here's the thing that I think the problem is, is because 
you know, when you go back to, or let's go back to the draft, okay? I did a video and said I think Dak Prescott's the first, the, the best, um, best guy to be on the Dallas Cowboys, best quarterback for him. That was my opinion, and I know I'm a nobody. I'm, you know, here in my basement, not my mama's basement, my basement. But we go through, let, let's just go through the list because they all basically said Dak is nothing, okay? Jared Goff, California, second round. Jared Goff, no superstar, but he's sure, uh, number one, was Jared Goff. Um, he's no superstar, but he's the surest thing at the quarterback position in this class. He possesses a relatively high floor and an offense with playmakers around him. I think Jared Goff can become a productive passer at the next level. They had number two. Now, this is, uh, what is this? Let me... Let me make sure I tell you. This was draft wire from USA Today. So, you know, you can go through different ones, and it may be slightly different here or there, but it's basically the same. Paxton Lynch, they had at number two. It's a tight race between Lynch and Jones for the quarterback with the highest ceiling in the class, but I slightly prefer athleticism. Now, you remember, Cowboys were interested in Paxton Lynch. Car- they had Cardell Jones at number three, which th- th- this one's kind of kind of really skewed. Uh, I'm a big fan of Carl Jones' game. It would not be a surprise to me if he becomes the best quarterback in the 2016 class. Carson Wentz, North Dakota State. I'm a big fan of Wentz's game, um, but no NDSU quarterback rises to the top 10 notoriety on many analytics. Okay, blah, 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 blah. So they had number four. Connor Cook, another guy the Cowboys were interested in. Cook has a really nice set of physical tools, but he makes bad decisions. Jeff Driscoll, Louisiana Tech. He's tough, strong in the pocket, and he has an arm to make big throws. Number seven, Brandon Allen. I've quietly been a fan of Allen throughout this pre-draft, blah, 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 blah. Vernon Adams loves to play backyard football, but he um, can typically make it work. And then finally, you'll say today got down to nine. I'm not high on Prescott as many other analysts, and the quarterback's recent DUI didn't uh, did his draft stock no favor. His tool sets is decent, not elite as some would have you believe, but Prescott does work hard and has improved significantly each year he was at Mississippi State. Accuracy is a major concern for me, but Prescott does have developmental de- 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 promise. So they had him nine. And nobody thought he was going to be ever starting in in the NFL. The Cowboys didn't think. Cowboys drafted him because he was basically the guy that was left. And they lucked the hell out. And then throughout his career, you looked at his rookie season. You know, after knowing we didn't say this guy was going to be good, we can't give this guy credit. We can't give him credit. So they said, well, he's a dink and dunker. He can't, you know, he, he, he's okay at being a game manager. He can't get the ball down the field. It's really just a running game. Zeke Elliott in a great offensive line. He, he's nothing. So, of course, the second year when Zeke was hurt and so on and we had problems with the offensive line, you know, we had the Chaz Green and we had Tyron Smith getting hurt and everything else. And Zeke Elliott back and forth to court and everything else with the NFL. Of course, it was a sophomore slump. Oh, you know. The shoes are off. See, we told you. We told you he's not good. Then Dak Prescott started getting, uh, you know, that that, we're having the problems of not having players around him. So then the knock was to prove that they were right. He's not elite. He has to have people around him. He needs guys to be successful. He needs the perfect situation. Well, Josh Allen's had some pretty good ones, and he ain't succeeding. So I guess he needs the perfect situation, too. In fact, Josh Allen, who, you know, Dan Orlowski says is, is is elite and should be MVP, they realize we need to run the football and keep the ball out of Josh Allen's hands more because he's going to turn it over. He's got twice the turnovers that Dak Prescott. Oh, and that was the other thing. Uh, see, we told you. He turns the ball over so much. See, we were right. He's not an elite quarterback. He's not great. They keep coming up with reasons because they don't want to admit that they were wrong. They don't want to admit they were wrong. They've been killing him. When when he was throwing, after you said he was a dink and dunker, he starts throwing the ball down the field and ends up being, you know, scoring more points and stuff. Oh, well, it's garbage time. 
You know, they're blowing people out, so it doesn't count. When you have guys like Matthew Stafford, you say, is a Hall of Famer, whose team was always in garbage time because they were always losing. They were always passing the football because they were behind. And that guy, turns the ball, has the second most pick sixes in the history of football. Behind Brett Favre, who played for 20 years. So, the problem is... They were wrong from get, from from Jump Street, and with the Dallas Cowboys being America's team, everybody sees that you're wrong, and they don't want to do the walk of shame. It's easier to try and just not give them credit. It's okay if it's Josh Rosen's with the Arizona Cardinals because nobody cares, nobody pays attention to his career. It doesn't matter if it's Kyler Murray. They were wrong about because it's again the Cardinals. They can be wrong about all these other guys because nobody cares. But because it was Dak Prescott and they have constantly gone through and said he's not the one, they propped up all kinds of guys. You remember, you know, how it was constantly Carson Wentz, you know, first round talent, Hall of Fame pedigree. You know, he's a Maserati. Dak Prescott, eh, he's just a Corvette. He's just a Corvette, right? But then you have Carson Wentz fail. Then it was Kyler Murray. It was Deshaun Watson. It was Russell Wilson. It was constantly they were fine, trying to find a new um, hope against Dak Prescott so they don't have to admit that they were wrong. And even now... Where Dak should be an MVP, should be an MVP. You look at the numbers between Lamar Jackson, where they're trying to convince you that Lamar Jackson is more important, even though they've got historically great defense over there and a great supporting cast, even though that Dak Prescott's got more touchdowns and things like that. You could look and say, if you take Dak Prescott off this offense, this offense ain't doing shit, regardless of what Skip Bales tells you about Cooper Rush. They can't admit that they were wrong. And instead of admitting that they're wrong, they're trying to hide the truth and make up for it. Now it's, oh, well, Christian McCaffrey, you know, or, or Tariq Hill. Tariq, the wives, uh, Tariq Hill. Yeah, yeah, he is. Oh, but, but now Tariq Hill's, oh, well, it should be Lamar Jackson. Because they can't admit they were wrong about Dak Prescott. Nobody works harder than him. Nobody. Nobody has gone through the shit and the scrutiny that that guy has. He just brushes it off. Nobody is under more pressure than that guy in all of the NFL. Nobody's more visible. And they can't admit to say, that guy's good. If it was anybody other than Dak Prescott, if it had been one of their crown jewels where, you know, Josh Allen, the generational talent guy, they would be screaming it from the highest mountains about how right we were and how great that guy is. If it was Justin Herbert, oh, they would go crazy. Oh, my God. See, we told you so. But they can't go through and say, God, I was wrong about Dak Prescott. That guy is playing unbelievable. That's why constantly doubt it. That's my take on it. You can believe what you want to believe. I believe he's a great quarterback. I believe he's been one for a long time, regardless of what the talking heads say. I'm Mark Holmes, and I appreciate you guys. Whew. We're talking about playoffs. Peace. <laughs>